Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, Pandasaurus Games' newest edition, Dinosaur Island uh, Roar and Ride Game, and that is their companion app. So I'm just going to take a look at background as you're playing it. Uh, yeah. We're just going to turn all these guys down. If, if you're playing it by yourself, um, but for the purposes of recording, let's go ahead and turn this down. Now, um, quick disclaimer is that this is not Dinosaur Island Roar and Write, the app. You still need access to a physical copy of the game in order to utilize this app. This is the companion app and essentially is just replaces the paper um, that you would normally write on. So if you, A, happen to be have played the game a ton and are running low on your paper or um, are really an environmentalist and would rather not use the paper and be more environmentally friendly or if you are traveling this is a great thing to go ahead and have it's free to download and again you still need access to um, if nothing else the dice but let's take a look here at how we play how we utilize this companion app the first thing you're going to want to do is select your cards so ideally um you know you would take your deck of cards out of the game the physical cards shuffle them up and deal three out now if you are traveling uh you could simply randomly select uh three so let's just select these three just for the examples of previewing the companion app and then you're gonna just select and also the same thing with the specialists again for the purposes of showing off the companion app, I'm just gonna select these three. Ideally, you have the physical copy next to you, you shuffle up the actual cards, and you deal three out. Um, because the one other thing I would say that you need other than the dice is the board. Now, some people just have the board memorized and don't really need it, um, but it is handy to have. So, for the, the purposes of this preview, we've just gone ahead, no, uh, I'm going to go through the tutorial. So here you see uh, a modified version of the left sheet. And this is the one where you keep track of your DNA, your threat and security. This is where you mark off your dinosaurs. And you can see right now it is a very blown up version of essentially your park. Now, there are various areas that are going to be able to drop down. For example, your DNA, your security and threat and the uh, special buildings that you can build. All right, so those are all drop downs. Then um, the one thing uh, uh, so far that I feel like would be really nice for them to add is the ability to play in landscape mode. Right now the app is locked in you know, a portrait mode and so you have to play with your iPad or iPhone vertically and it would be nice if I wanted the option to flip it sideways and uh, have both sheets side by side like I would normally play them in the game. And so I can see all the information currently now. If I want to see the other information, I have to scroll through here. And you can see everything's there. I just have to scroll up and down. I can't quickly at a glance see what my specialists are doing or what attractions I have and look at the map at the same time. Like if I scroll down here and say, hmm, which of these attractions do I want to build? Where can I fit it? I have to kind of scroll back and forth. Um, so that would be a nice option that they could add. But again, this is really nice and big. I'm playing this on an iPad at the moment and that would be my recommendation. I tried this on a phone, on my phone. It's a, you know, standard size iPhone and it gets kind of tricky touching, especially with, you know, fat fingers, touching uh, things like the individual circles of the dinosaurs or the individual coins for the specialists. Um, you can, uh, zoom in you can see that i just zoomed in and zoomed out there uh, and it comes in handy on the phone but it's nice playing where you don't have to play that and if you have a stylist uh, that comes in handy as well so let's talk about um some of the uh well the biggest difference in the playing with the companion app that you need to understand versus playing uh with the physical components. And that is when you play with the physical components, 
when you gain coins, when you mostly, or also when you gain roads, you either want to store them away, which you can see there is an area here to store away. Um, and I'm touching on it because it's not working. And that's because any roads or coins that you accumulate in the game have to first be placed along the bottom of the screen here where you can see there's like instant coins and instant roads. So I'm just giving myself some coins and some roads here. Now that I have banked these coins, I have to spend them immediately or I have to put them in my... Uh, safe or whatever you want to call this um so if i want to save them to be used later i still have to have banked them uh added them to this little queue at the bottom before i can then spend them uh on the sheets so that's that's a little bit of an extra step that's a little obnoxious i can't sit here and look at my dice and be like okay i got the dice with the two coins on it uh, i want to spend them on the security chief and just go boom boom and touch the security chief i actually have to have accumulated those two coins down here in my queue before i can then add them to the security chief there is an undo button and it works progressively. You can see that I just undid the security chief. It went all the way back and undid all the coins I put in my safe. So that is nice. Uh, the undo button will go back effectively, I guess, all the way back to the beginning of the game. I haven't tried that out, but I have yet to not be able to undo an action, especially when, um, you know, when you say touch on something there and put it in the safe, if you touch it again, it uses it. Uh, it doesn't put it back. So just keep that in mind. Um, that's the biggest thing that I've noticed in um, playing with the companion app is remembering that you have to kind of cue stuff down here at the bottom as they come off the dice. So let's um, quickly just run through how you input stuff. It's pretty straightforward um, for the DNA. Obviously, like at the beginning of the game, you would come in here normally and um, give yourself two of each. Well, not, see there, I, I made the mistake. Two of each basic and one of each uh, advanced. But then if you say gain more, you simply just come to the drop down box and say, all right, here's some more DNA for me. Now, again, if you touch on it again, well, okay. That's right, because you can't you can't just touch on the DNA to spend it. You actually have to spend DNA using the dinosaurs. So we'll get those. We'll get back to that in a second. But it does give you a very nice um, abbreviated look. Just basically the counts and you can see up at the top here. And as I start to spend those, you'll see how many I've spent at the bottom. And same thing with threat here. You basically you can add security and add threat. And it's going to do the automatic calculations of death at the end. So let's give us a little bit of death here, uh, or a little bit of risk, so that we're, we'll have to mess with some disasters at the end. Um, all right, and we'll take a look again at the buildings here in a second, because uh, I want to show off uh, some other stuff. All right, so uh, just as a reminder here, you can see currently I have three security. So let's go down here and let's say I've got my six coins and I want the first person I want to hire is the security chief. So boom, boom, boom. You can see bloop, bloop, the uh, two, the bonus, instant bonus of gaining two security kind of floated up in the air there. It just kind of magically appeared. And if we go up here to our security now, not only does it give us that visual indication of the numbers, but we can see that two security has been added to our pips. So... Um, again, a really nice, just quick, brief look gives you the counts, but, uh, in adding the security chief, it automatically adds the, uh, security for you. Same thing with the tour guide here. If I were to spend my three remaining coins on the tour guide, boom, it will have instantly come down here and gives me my three, uh, excitement. So. Um, that's a really nice touch of the companion app that it kind of instantly, it's giving you those instant bonuses. Let's also take a look here at the junior scientist, what she would do. Oh, see, it's telling me, well, you need some coins. Can you really afford this? 
well, yes, let's just say that I found three coins somewhere on a dice that fell on the floor, and I'm gonna go ahead and give myself, boom, 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 a junior scientist. In this instance, it pops up this screen, which I am perfectly fine with. Uh, it versus, uh, you know, the drop down DNA thing happening because you can see at the bottom, the dinosaurs are all listed at the bottom and it's showing me what DNA I would need to build those dinosaurs. So again, if I were to just do the drop down of the DNA, I, I wouldn't have a view of the dinosaurs and what it takes to build them. So this is a nice touch here and I could simply say, hmm, we're gonna go after T-Rexes. So there's my two DNA, confirm. And then when we go back over here, you can see along the top that I have three, three and two, but again, visually, I can see it there as well. Now let's turn around and spend some DNA and put some stuff into our parks here. So like I said, let's go ahead and build that T-Rex. So if you just touch on, uh, again, the little circle, and again, this is where playing on a larger screen is definitely helpful because those circles are not big even on the iPad and they're super tiny on, the, uh, on a phone. But once you touch on the circle, it brings up this larger screen. Um, I think really just this is more thematics than anything. It gives them a chance to show off their little digital animation of the T-Rex, uh, reminds you everything you're getting into, but then you're simply going to touch the box there. And when you touch the first circle, you have to then place the paddock. And this is probably where some people may want the companion app just for this reason alone, because they don't like having to physically draw the Tetris shapes on their map. Uh, here it is automatically given to you. I can use my finger to, to touch on it and move it around. And let's say I want to put it right there to make sure that we can get to that three star exit. And we're only one road away from the HQ. Done, confirm. That's where I want to go. And you can see magically my threat has now increased. My excitement, if we go down here, has increased, all right, and everything's set. Now, if we go back in and we have the DNA to build more T-Rexes, we could build two more. So we're gonna go boop and boop. The rest of it's just gonna float up. We don't have to place a paddock at this point, so it allows us to just add T-Rexes. You can see now the count of T-Rexes is three. Our security has gone way, I mean, our threat has gone way up, but so has our excitement. All that has been marked automatically for us on the app, which is really nice. So at this point, we also need a road. Uh, and to build a road, um, we need to hit this wrench button over here. You can see these two cues at the bottom are coins on our roads. To use the road, we're gonna touch the wrench symbol. And now it gives us a little road all right, on the map and I can touch that road and I can kind of move it to where I want it. And now I just have to hit the rotate buttons here to go bloop, bloop, and we are set. I could also turn it into a curved road or a straight road, um, however I so see fit. So um, I'm not really sure how the curved road works, to be honest with you, because you can't place stuff uh, at corners with each other, but again. Um, so there you go. Uh, that is adding a road. We're going to confirm. And now that road is in there. All right. So we've talked about adding dinosaurs. We've talked about adding roads. We've talked about adding things to our, um, to our park. Let's go ahead and add a building. So let's now see, for example, if we take the build action and we want to say build a merchandise shop, we're going to boom, we're going to build the merchandise shop. It's gonna give it to us right here. And we're gonna say, we're gonna try and push right there. We like it where we want it. We can um, mirror it up and down. We can mirror it right and left. And you can see if I try and mirror it that way, it's in red. I can't put it there. That's not a legal position. So I may put it like that. All right, we can rotate it around. All of these buttons are at the bottom. When we're good, we just hit it, all right? And again, let's let's add in another road. Let's make it legal. Ba boom, ba boom. Uh, let's add in one more road to get us to the exit. Whoop! Threw it off the screen there. Ba boom, ba boom. Okay. All right. So we're doing pretty good here on our little park tour. Now, another thing I want to point out is, 
uh, all this instant stuff that again is really nice by the companion app let's say we build a building uh, and we're gonna build the hot spring mud spa so I need to find some coins I'm gonna magically find six coins and then I'm gonna spend those coins boop, boop, boop. so here this is the shape of the mud spa that I have to find a home for and I'm looking to get down so I want to mirror it and flip it and we're gonna start heading down this direction okay watch what happens when I hit okay boom it now instantly gives me a restaurant to build because that was the instant action for building the uh, I can't even remember the name of the building that I built um, but I guess we need to place this now so let's flip you and I want to stick you right there Okay, after connecting some roads, I'll be able to have gotten to the eight. Um, okay. So you can see here, what did we bring? We built the hot spring mud spa that gave us an instant bonus of a restaurant. Uh, and that restaurant was instantly given to us. Also, if we scroll down here, we can see that restaurant is checked off. Again, so all these like quality of life stuff that we gain, um, instantly again say for example we build our architect here boom 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 it's going to give us this road that we have to uh, instantly put out oh she gave us two roads that's right boom boom um so you can see here that uh the the app does have some really nice touches uh beyond the extra step of having to kind of bank your coins first before you spend them um, it, there really is some nice things that speed up your process here. Um, okay, so I think I have covered most everything there is to cover. Um, I don't want to get too out of control here. So let's say we bought, this is an amazing first round, by the way, I'm having here. All right, so I think we're good. Let's go ahead and pretend that we have gone through our first two rounds of uh dice drafting so we're going to go down here to round one and we're going to hit the big arrow and that's going to push us to the run the park phase all right are you ready to move on to the next phase any coins will and roads that can't be banked will be lost that is referring to here um, because we've got six coins that we have spent and uh, one road so let's just say oh i don't want to get rid of my coins here so i'm going to spend my six coins right here because i'm going to show off something later and i'm gonna bank my road boom so now we've zeroed out both of these that's what the error warning was referring to was that we were going to lose these because they're not going to automatically bank they're sitting here at the bottom of our instant queue uh, we need to be able to put them somewhere. So now we're ready to move. And you can see that the phase wasn't, uh, the, the error message didn't come up because I had nothing banked here that time. All right, but now we're moving on to the park phase. And in this instance, you still kind of have to do things manually. Um, so you can see for the merch we would have to roll one of our physical dice for the food we're going to gain a coin there uh, we go down here for the security chief and we're going to gain a security um, we're going to get to gain two roads we get to make up to two dinosaurs so we would have to scroll back up here um, and technically you should say all right i want to go on to my next phase here um, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself here. All right. There we go. So I did not need to. Attractions, my apologies. I misspoke a second ago. Attractions need, need to be, um, maybe they don't. Maybe I've just been doing it manually and bypassing. So since we're in the phase, um, run the park phase, what I just did was touch on my security chief. I touched on his arrow area once. It gave me my instant uh, security, and now I moved on. Now let's see what happens if I click on the tour guide. 
boom, he's going to give me two roads. Um, what's interesting is, is that I don't see a way to bank these. It appears that I just have to kind of stick them out here, which is interesting. Um, but let's see what happens when we go to the spend DNA to make up to two dinosaurs of any type. Okay, so let's add in. Um, now, see, I'm trying to click on the Velociraptor, but it's not going to let me do it. See? It let me bring it up, but I don't have the DNA. So let's try a Brachiosaurus. I can build a Brachiosaurus. So let's put you right there. And then I get to build two dinosaurs. So then let's build a Triceratops. I can't put it right there. So there we go. All right. And again, let's go back over here. The architect is going to allow us to destroy a building. Now we already did that option and we, we declined. So, But you can see you just click on the arrows and it walks you through the steps of what you need to do. So let's move on to the dino tour now. We're ready to move on to the next phase. You can see the purple three matches up with the dino tour purple three. All right, and we go back up here. And I want to go well, oh, there we go, run tour. Okay, pick a Jeep will we'll be red. All right, so I want to visit the T-Rex, okay? And now, since I have an option, it's gonna say, where do you wanna go? Well, I wanna go the long route. Do I want to stop at five? No, nope. I want to keep going. I want to keep going down here. Now I want to stop at there. So it's giving me the four excitement that I gained for hitting four buildings. You can see my little X's um, and li little X's within the buildings. Also the big X over top of the eight. So really smooth way of doing the uh, dino tour. We're ready to move on to the next phase. And then here you see it is the excitement phase. And in this phase, um, we simply need to uh, add this manually. So this is what I uh, I spoke earlier about adding stuff manually. This is where I remembered it. So, oh no, you gain rewards. There we go. So two basic DNA, boom, 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 one advanced, uh, security threat, okay. So I was adding stuff in manually and I completely missed this gain rewards button here at the bottom. So again, it is just uh, completely automating all of that stuff for you, which is really nice. Um, the run tour button, the death tally button, let's move on to the next phase because we do have, so let's do death tally total. All right, and it says you do need to deal with some disasters. So I'm going to kill some roads now. And I want to kill this one because I no longer need it. Yes, I'm sure. I have to destroy two more, so I'm fine with this one. Yes, and this one. Yes. All right, so we're good. It shows us where we are on the death tally total. We have dealt with our hazard. We are going to push on to the next phase, and boom, you can see the dice symbol, and we are back to more dice drafting. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, when you get to the end here, it is gonna help you uh, calculate your total score, which again, is really nice, uh, not having to do that math. I'm not gonna go through all that. That's uh, something exciting you can uh, see for yourself. One other thing that I have not touched on so far, if you wanted to spend two coins, say at any time, two coins to get a road, you could simply click on the wrench symbol here, similar to clicking on the wrench for the roads. And it asks you, what do you want to spend this on? I want some roads. Uh, and you can see it gave me one road there to then use. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, again, this is a really nice 
app. It's very well polished. This just came out. Uh, so I'm sure some improvements will be coming down the road, but also there may be a bug or two that you come across. Again, this was just released. This is a brand new companion app, but um, I personally can see myself using this a lot. Um, if like space is an issue or especially if you think about it, if you are a traveler or someone traveling and space is a commodity, throw your dice into a bag, right? Throw your dice into the dice bag and pack that away. Take a picture of the player board and then just randomly pick three specialists and three buildings to play with each turn. And you essentially have turned Dinosaur Island Roar and Write into one of the most portable roll and write games out there uh, in my opinion which is just glorious you could easily play this it would be a little loud but you could play this on a uh, food tray on an airplane you know the you play it on the tray again rolling the dice if you brought like your own little dice tray that would soften up the noise of rolling dice then you're golden ladies and gentlemen um so that's all I have to say about that. Again, this was just meant to be a preview. If you are interested in seeing me play through a full game of um, Dinosaur Island Roll and Write using the companion app, please let me know in the comment section below. But again, the gameplay, the actual gameplay does not change. Um, so, and again, if you were playing this solo, um, then you would need to... Um, have the the solo ai cards available to flip and and take out some dice and things like that and again if you were wanting to use this and play multiplayer each person would need to have their own um app downloaded but again there is no when you're playing multiplayer the only interaction you're having with the other player is where to place your dice and di drafting those dice which is the physical component that you still need to play the game so these don't need to be linked. The apps don't need to be linked. You don't need to all be on the same network or anything like that. So you could essentially play this uh, across a distance as long as somebody had the dice um, on like a Zoom. Uh, if you do a FaceTime where people can see the dice and tell you which dice they want to draft, everybody can just have their own version up on their iPad and you could play over Zoom, which is a great uh, option here in the uh, you know, COVID environment. So again, lots of great things to say about this companion app. It's free to download uh, from the app store, from the Google store. Uh, so please uh, go check it out, uh, especially uh, if you already have Dinosaur Island Roar and Write, why wouldn't you download this? If you, however, want to just mess around with the game or pretend like you've got some dice just to get the feel for it, um, before you purchase the game. This is kind of a great way to experience just a little bit of the game before actually diving in and purchasing it. So just a lot of great things to say about this game. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.